welcome to the quarantine, guys. It is Wednesday, and I'm super excited to do this uh, speed strength workout today with you. It is going to be, we're gonna be utilizing dumbbells if you have them. And I would love for you to do the lightest dumbbells that you possibly have. So, so um, maybe we'll be doing two dumbbells if you have light ones. Uh, maybe even we'll be doing one, but it's gonna be about speed and it's gonna be about perfect form. So, um, that's what we're going to have. And then we're going to do our Wednesday mobility flow. So we're going to spend a lot of time in the beginning of class doing all of our mobility work. And, um, uh, and then so you'll need a mat and then just the dumbbells or a very, very light kettlebell if you have one. Um, and uh, I, I decided to go a little off, off story today um, and do a classic Training for Warriors story, um, which is the Into the Storm story. And um, I... I, th I think this is one of my favorite Training for Warriors stories. And it is about, um, and, and this, is a, this isn't fictional, this is actually like real life, you can Google it. <laughs> so um, in Colorado, uh, Colorado is so interesting geographically, right? Where it has um, to the west, you have the Rocky Mountains and then it goes right into the Great Plains. And it's one of the only places on the planet where buffalo and cows actually graze in the same area. And because of the nature of the geography, um, storms always come in over the Rockies from the west, and then they go into the east over the plains. Well, you can see these huge storms coming, and uh, so can the cows and the buffalo. So when the cows see the storm coming, they wait until the storm, I'm gonna pretend like this is west or east, that they wait until the storm is directly over them, and then they travel with the storm, prolonging the amount of time that they're spending with the storm because they're just, they're never able to outrun it. They're just walking with the storm, but they think that they're evading the storm. And when the buffalo um, see that same storm coming, they actually wait until it's right over them and then they run into it. I mean, just charge at it. And they're out of that storm so much faster. And I think the really interesting point about this story is that it's the same storm, but it's two different ways of going at a problem, right? Either you can try to evade that storm by trying to outrun it, which you won't, and you will prolong your misery and your pain and frustration, or you can just get that, get that uh, initial um, pain and frustration over with really, really fast by attacking the problem. You know, and of course, this has to do with relationships. It has to do with um, any like paying bills, like avoiding paying bills. Like you're only going to prolong that pain if you pro if you if you don't handle that situation, as opposed to feeling the pain, just going in, doing what you got to do to have those crucial conversations or whatever. But um, I I just I I adore I adore this story about just just running into that storm and, and getting that, getting that thing over with, you know, I think it's, it's almost the same thing with, uh, with working out, you know, like we can, we can like procrastinate and we can go, you know, God, I just, I just don't want to wake up this morning. And I don't want to, I don't want to work out the next day. You might, it might be a little bit harder or maybe you take a week off or maybe you take a month off and man, when you get back into it, it's just that much harder as opposed to just getting up and doing the thing, you know? So anyway, that's, that's my, that's my, or that's not my story, it's, it's the world story, but um, I, I just, I really, really love that. We are going to start with our hip circles. So, with my hip circles, I want to bring my elbow, my knee to my elbow, out to the side, up and back, and down. So I'm just drawing this really nice big circle with that knee. I'm going to go five times forward. Four, five, and then I'm going to go five times back. Hi, Stila. Two, three, four, and five. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and do our fire hydrants. So guys, as I'm in this quadruped position, I always want to make sure that my shoulders are over my wrists. And so, Rico, what I was talking about was just being on those, on those, uh, on those knuckles, or like you, you talked about, you just be on those, um, the dumbbells for to ease those wrist issues. So then, I'm gonna lift up that leg and back down. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to point that belly button to the ground, so I'm not lifting that hip. I'm keeping that hip down, and that's gonna really help activate that knee. We're just gonna do this five times. I want you to give me a nice pause as 
the top. And then we're going to switch it out to the other way. So we're going to come to knee to elbow, out to side, up and back, and down. Knee to elbow, out to side, up and back, and down. Keeping that leg at a right angle the entire time. So I'm not keeping that leg out straight. It's bent. And I'm just thinking those really nice, lovely, hip warming circles. After I've done five forward, I'm going to go five back. One, two, three, four, and five. Yeah. Now, get that glute activated. Give me a nice pause at the top as we build in our fire hydrants. Three, four, and five. I got our hips a little bit warmed up. I want to go to my shin box kick through. So I'm going to bring that, that shin right in front of me. And then I'm going to take my knee to my foot. I'm going to try to stay as upright in my chest as possible. If I need to, I'll put my hands behind me. I'm going to kick that leg out. I'm going to bring it forward. It's going to line up with my belly button. I'm going to take it back in and back to the starting pose. So go ahead and kick. I'm going to do four on the right, two, Three and four. Then I'm just going to switch out my legs. Go to the other side. So again, guys, if I need to, just use my arms as an assist. Keep that chest up, that back flat. Three, four. Guys. Guys, right, so we're going to go into our frog stretch next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen out my knees. I'm going to have my feet come directly off my knees. I'm going to come down to my forearms. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the earth with my knees for five, four, three, two, one. And then I'm going to release. So when I release, I'm going to rock it forward so I get that tension off my groin. All right? And then, Push back in, maybe get my knees out a little bit further. I'm still being really gentle, but still warming up. Now I'm going to squeeze the earth together. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice release. We're going to do this one more time. Rock it forward, bring it back, and squeeze ease. Getting those knees to really pull together. Three, two, one. I'm going to walk it up, be really careful. And now we're going to go into our cat cow, guys. So again, I'm in that quadruped position, and I'm going to lean with my tailbone first. So I'm going to pull my tailbone underneath me, and then I'm going to reach up in my thoracic spine, pulling my shoulder blades, getting that head down, and then I'm going to lean with my tailbone again, really arching that back, pulling my neck up out of my shoulders. All right, take it back. To my cat. Go the other way. Into my cow. For one more time. I like these Wednesdays, guys. It's so good to just get all this mobility, especially right before speed strength. All right. Now, guys, we're going to go into our pigeon stretch. Pigeon. So, what I want to do is I want to come into this high plank. I'm going to bring my knee forward and I'm going to place my knee in between both of my hands. Now, what I'm doing is I'm staying up on, onto this back leg so I'm not leaning all the way into it so that I, I lose this stretch. I'm trying to stay really, really stable with this. Now, my other hip, the hip that is now over that foot, I want to turn it under so I'm getting my hips level and flat. That's where I'm going to feel the stretch. Right? I'm going to hold this and I'm going to breathe into it. I want you guys to really breathe deep into those bellies. Don't have it be a superficial chest breath. I want you to breathe deep. It might be kind of hard because of the position that we're in. I want you to breathe in through the nose, deep, and then out through the mouth. Okay? Give me two more breaths. Breath in. Big breath out. Big breath in. Like that. I'm going to switch it out. So I'm going into this high plank, bringing my knee forward, 
coming down, staying, keeping his leg off the ground, but then I'm going to twist this hip towards the ground. And breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in and breathing out. One more time. In and out. Guys, oh, we're down on the ground. Let's go ahead and go back to our quadruped position. And what we're going to do is shoulder glides. So with my shoulder glides, what I want to do is I'm going to bring my shoulders down to my hips, and then I'm going to bring my shoulders forward. So we're not doing circles. We're just gliding it in this horizontal plane, bringing my shoulders forward, reaching up out of my scapula towards, towards the front wall. And then I'm going to pull my shoulder blades down to my back pockets. Let's go five times in this horizontal plane. More. And then we're going to go into a vertical plane. So I'm going to pull my shoulders up to the ceiling and then I'm going to reach up out of them. Going up to the ceiling, reaching out of my shoulders. So nice vertical shoulder glides. It definitely, it definitely feels like a different exercise than our, than our circles. I find these pretty difficult. Give me one more. All right, so now we're going to do this half kneeling position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my hip forward, so my pelvis is forward, so I'm going to get this nice little stretch in my quad. And I'm going to be slightly over this front angle, getting that angle mobility in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my arm forward. I'm going to reach, reach, reach. Now, I really want to reach out with this arm, but I want to keep this rib cage down, so I'm not pulling out of my rib cage. I'm just pulling that arm forward. So I'm coming up. Now I'm going to turn my palm and my shoulder towards you, and I'm going to rotate it all the way around, bringing that palm to that back wall. Now my palm is up, facing the ceiling, coming back down, keeping that rib cage engaged, bringing it back up, palm up, palm to back wall, rotating palm and shoulder at the same time, hand towards you, coming forward. Palm down, feeling that really nice, slow motion with this. Then we're going to go to our other side. So again, the pelvis is forward, I'm squeezing that glute, getting this, this nice little ankle mobility going on here. Reaching, 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 keeping this rib cage down, reaching towards that front wall. Now all of this turns as my palm comes towards you. My entire arm, my shoulder, Palm is facing back wall at this point. Then, as I bring it down lower, it's going to face up to the ceiling. Coming back in. Palm up. Palm to back wall. Rotating, rotating, rotating. You might feel some creaks and cracks. Like I do. Reaching forward. Coming back down. Now, guys. We're going to be in a full kneeling, um, tall kneeling position. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring our arms out to the sides and have my, my uh, thumbs pointed up to the ceiling. And then I'm just going to do some really nice, gentle neck circles. So I'm going to bring my head forward, out to the side, to the back, and down. Now, I like to be really delicate with this because I have some neck issues. And so what I like to pretend is either that I have a laser pointer on the top of my head Maybe a spotlight. And I'm lifting up out of my neck, so I'm not crunching down into it. And I'm drawing a circle in the sky with either of those light <laughs> pieces of wood. <laughs> so I got five. This way, now I'm going to rotate it the other way. I get that neck to loosen up. All right, guys. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to stand up, and then we're going to go into our I, Y, W's, and T's. And so for my eyes, I want to go into this hinge position. So I'm pulling my butt to that back wall, and I want to feel my hamstrings activate. So I might be bending my knee, and we're going to feel those hamstrings turn on. Keeping my back flat, I'm going to touch my hands forward, and then I'm going to come up right next to my ears. So bringing those 
biceps right up next to my ears, and I'm pausing at the top. We're gonna do five, three, four, five. Stand up, reset, coming back down as we go into my block. So now I'm at a 45 degree angle. Palms come down, biceps in line with the ears. Stay in this really nice standing position. Don't hurt those shoulders. Don't use that back. Keep that back flat. Three, four, five. Nice. Now I'm going to go into my W's. So for my W's, my elbows are going to be together, my hands are going to be together. So I'm going to be into that, in that hinge position. I'm going to come out to the side and back down. With all of these guys, I want that nice pause at the top. So you can see that my hands are in line with my shoulders, pulling those elbows back, getting those shoulder blades to come together. Three, four, and five. Nice. Then we're going to our T's. So same thing, hinge position. My arms are out straight, coming straight out to the sides. All right, so coming straight off my shoulders, I'm not flying back. Not forward in my wide, just coming straight out to the side. Again, squeeze those shoulders, guys. Shoulders should be feeling nice and warmed up at this point. And five. Let's go back to the floor. We're going to go into our side line archer. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay on my side. I'm going to bring both my hands forward, my arms are outstretched forward, my legs are to 90 degree, and I want to make sure I keep those knees stacked, all right? So I'm not letting that upper knee cool as I, as I reach back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my hand along my chest, I'm going to reach back towards that back wall, I'm going to try to get this shoulder to reach down to the ground. You may or may not be able to touch the ground, but I am not able to. You're going to come back in. Making sure that those knees are lined up, all right? So in this nice stretch, in that thoracic spine, in that chest, in your shoulders. Let's just do one more on this side. So we're doing three, two. All right, I'm going to switch it out to the other side. To accomplish, try to accomplish not turn it off all night. All right. In, making sure those knees are stacked, reaching. You might get one shoulder down lower to the ground on one side more than the other. This one is definitely harder for me, this side. Two, reach, 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 reach. Follow that hand with your eyes to that back wall. Yeah, all right. We are now in our convenient place to do our pretzel, everybody's favorite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bottom leg and I'm going to grab it with my top arm. And then I'm going to take my, my top leg and I'm going to grab it with my bottom arm. And what I'm trying to do is pull this top leg up towards my chest. I'm trying to pull this bottom leg straight, that top thigh straight. And then I'm going to try to reach that shoulder to the ground and breathe into it. Pretzel, pretzel, pretzel. Give me about three big deep breaths with this, guys. Really try to work that shoulder towards the ground. You need to pull on this bottom leg a little bit more to get a little bit more of a stretch in that quad. Awesome. All right, now we switch it out to the other side. I'm going to face you so you can see how my, my leg is coming down off my body. So like this leg is coming straight down. This leg I'm holding up, grabbing this bottom foot. Trying to pull this shoulder to the ground. Not the most inspiring position, but it's necessary. Three big breaths. This one will probably be the YouTube thumbnail that will come up later. But, uh, All right. So, guys, now we're over to do. We're going to stand that up again. We're going to do our deep squats. So I'm going to widen out those feet, make room for my hips. I'm going to come down as deep as I possibly can in that squat. 
And then I'm going to rotate out. I'm going to rotate out. And then I'm going to grab my toes and I'm going to straighten my legs. I'm going to get this really nice hamstring stretch. Let that lower back relax. Come back down into my low, deep squat. Rotating, rotating, grabbing those toes. Coming up. Back down, give me one more. Rotate, rotate, and straighten it out. Yeah, nice. I'm just gonna have you roll it up, take it slow, go one vertebrae at a time. All right, we're gonna do one more part of our warm up. We're gonna do our walk arounds. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this deep lunge to the side, I bring my hands next to my foot. And then I'm gonna walk my hands out towards you. I'm gonna come into this high plank, so my butt's down, my shoulders are over my wrists, and then I'm gonna walk back in. And I'm just gonna do a nice little rotation right towards that straight leg. I'm gonna walk it back out, I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna rotate. So this is not only warming up those legs, but we're getting a nice upper body stretch with this. Getting ready to go into our circuit. All right? So three times on each side is awesome. Okay? So now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my mat because I will not need that for the circuit. Okay. All right. So, guys, as part of our warm up, you're going to do one set of all of the exercises in our dumbbell nine to five. All right, so for our dumbbell nine to five, I'm gonna grab both of my dumbbells. Now, if you have like maybe one medium weight dumbbell, maybe you only wanna use one dumbbell with this, and that's fine. I'm gonna try it with two and still see if I can keep that speed and still keep the really good form that we need with this. So for my dumbbell high pull, what that is, is it, I'm in this hinged position, I'm going into this RDL pretty much. <coughs> Dumbbell is in line with my knees. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to force my hips and legs forward as I come into this upright row. So that's slow motion. So what is it going to look like at speed is this. So I'm using my legs to help push those weights up, keeping those weights alongside my body, not hitting myself with them. All right? So go ahead and give me 10 of these for a warm up. Four. Leading with those elbows, guys, making sure. That we lead with those elbows, we get to that hinge position, boom. Really lock out those legs and squeeze those glutes at the top. Right? You can also see that my feet are on a more narrow side as opposed to a wider squat position. All right? So hopefully that was 10. All right, now I'm going to go into my overhead press. So again, my feet are in a more narrow position, they're lined with my, my uh, hips. And then I'm going to bring my elbows in at the bottom, out at the top, in at the bottom, out at the top. So let's go ahead and do 10 of these as far as our warm up is concerned. Six, seven, eight, nine, and Ten. Now, guys, I grabbed ten pound dumbbells thinking these were going to be super light. Already feeling it, okay? So then I'm going to do my squats. So I can use both dumbbells, or if I want to, I can just use one dumbbell. Widening out those feet, making sure that I get level with those with my hip and my knee. Really squeeze it out at the top, guys. Press that pelvis forward. We're going to do ten. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I have my lateral lunges. So again, guys, I can use the one dumbbell, I can use two. It just depends on what I got in me today. So we come out to the side, I'm gonna step into it. We come out to the side, I'm gonna step into it. So I want you to make sure. Put all that weight into that lead leg, and that lead leg is what draws you back in again. You're not pushing off 
with that straight leg, all right? It's the lead leg that does all the work with this. Again, guys, if you want to, just take one weight. Go ahead, give me five on each side. Warm up, I want you to make sure you're really sticking that butt back to that back wall and then coming back up. Push that butt back, get that chest flat, go curve that back, all right? So we got our lateral lunges, we have our plank rows. So guys, my plank row, I'm in this high plank, my, my hips are in line with my shoulders, so I'm not pushed back in this A-frame, I want to make sure that my shoulders are over my wrists, I'm going to row it out, I'm going to pull, actually I'm going to have my feet wide, I'm going to pull that dumbbell next to my hip, all right? I'm trying to keep my hips from rotating, keep those hips really stable. Now, if you find your hips are rotating with this, go ahead and use the dumbbells, and I want you to do shoulder taps. So you're gonna tap it out to the opposite side. All right, so go ahead and give me five on each side. But the key with this is don't let those hips wobble. You're trying to keep that core super, super tight, super engaged, okay? So those are all of the exercises in the circuit. Now, as we just did our warm up, we did a normal speed with that. On speed strength day, we actually want to use resistance, the light resistance, but we want to increase velocity. So we want to up our speed with this. So I'm just going to show you what that's going to look like. So for my high pull, go into my RDL, boom, RDL, boom, right? Don't lose form, guys. Go as fast as you can for keeping that form. Now, if those two dumbbells are too heavy, go ahead and just use the one. But I want you to make sure you get that speed. Same thing with the overhead press. Nearing up those feet, it's going to look like this. Boom, boom. Everything's tight, guys. Everything's on. All right? Make sure you get that full range of motion with each of these exercises. All right. So, I'm going to turn on the clock just to make sure that we get about 45 seconds of rest. After we've done each exercise in the circuit, before we start the next one, we're going to do this circuit four times through. All right? So, what we're going to do is nine high pulls, eight overhead press, seven squats, six lateral lunges, six on each side, five plank rows, five plank rows on each side. And then we're gonna rest for 45 seconds, and then we're gonna go back into it again. Nine to five, it's a speed strength, nine to five. So I'm gonna start here, we got my high pulls, put me into that RDL, boom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, going into my overhead press, elbows in, elbows out at the top. Boom, eight of these. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Going into my squats, widening out those feet. Boom, if, the, if your weights are too heavy, go ahead and drop them. Just to get that speed. Three, four, five, six, seven, just seven. Right? I'm going to lose one weight with my lateral lunges. Stepping out. Stepping out. Again, guys, as fast as you can. This is two. We're doing six. This is three. Four. Five. Getting a butt to the back wall. And six. Nice job. Now we're going to the floor. We're going to plank rows. Widening out those feet, pull in that dumbbell to that hip, or you're doing shoulder taps. You're gonna do five on each side. Three, four. That's five. All right, guys, we're gonna take 45 seconds of rest. We're gonna grab some water. So, you might be able to go faster than me. You might be going a little slower than me. That's totally fine. Just really, really be conscientious of your form. 
and try to get as fast as you can with these exercises. All right. So speed strength is really it's like our only day where we do weighted exercises fast. Like even in our Monday or our Friday workouts, when we're doing time circuits or whatever, we still want to maintain a slow, super, super controlled form. This is the only day where we're introducing that resistance with really taxing our metabolic or cardiovascular system. All right, guys? That was a little over 45 seconds. We're back into our nine to five. We got our high almost. One, two, three. Really squeeze in the top, guys. Use those legs. Help get those weights up. Five, six, seven, eight, Nine. All right, got my overhead press. One, two, and eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Going into our squats, widening out those feet. Come down in parallel. Two, seven knees. Four, five, six, seven. Going into my lateral lunge, and I like to do the one, one way because fine, but I'm much slower at these. Two, six, three, four, five, six. Nice job, guys. All right, then we have our plank rows down on the ground. Widen up those feet, keep those hips really stable, guys. Right? Don't push back on your on your shoulders. Three, four, and five. Nice. Good job. Good job. All right, guys. Forty-five seconds of rest. That was round two. Going into round three. Grabbing my water. Really feeling my heart rate right now. So, if you get super gassed with this, don't worry about it. Take a longer rest than 45 seconds. That's totally okay. When we're actually in the dojo and we're doing these exercises. We partner up. One partner goes all the way through while the other partner's resting. Then the other person goes all the way through while the other person's resting. For the sake of this exercise, we're doing together right now. 45 seconds of rest is ample, unless your body needs more. So just listen to your body, all right? And going into round three, going into my high pulse, all right? Feet are narrow, coming into this RDL, and coming up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, going into my eight overhead press. My arms are next to my ears. Two, my butt is on, my legs are squeezing, my abs are on. Five, six, seven, eight, going into my seven squats. All right, guys, try to keep that upper body as upright as possible. Some people's physiology, she pushes them forward. That's okay. Just think about staying your break. That's all. We're doing seven of these. Five, six, and seven. I'm gonna go into my lateral lunges. Stepping out, making sure all that weight goes into that lead leg, pulling that butt to that back wall. This is three. Four. This is five. We're doing six. Six. Woo! Yeah. Now I'm going to my plank rows or shoulder top, guys. Whichever you have. If the weight is too heavy, you can either just bring your hand back towards your towards your hip, 
So you can do an opposite shoulder tap. All right? Going fast with this. Five things on each side. Four. And aha. Five. Woo! Yes. All right. 45 seconds of rest. And then we're going to go into our last set. Last set. That's what's happening. Into the storm, guys. Into the storm. Creating this little storm in our body. As soon as we get done with it, we're able to recover. Yay! All right. We'll take about 20 more seconds of rest. Then we go back into it. Woo! Again, set up for my high pulls. Okay, guys. Try and get that nice RDL, that Romanian deadlift. Keeping those, those lats on until we keep those lats really engaged. Using the force of my leg to come up. Let's go ahead and get started. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Nice. Going into my overhead press, elbows in and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. I got my squats. The squats, turning my palms in, feet are wide. Try to get as low, as fast as possible. Really squeezing those glutes as you come up. It's gonna help you with your speed. Four, five, six, and seven. All right, guys, going into our lateral lunges, step it out. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Going into our plank rows. One of my favorite exercises. I really feel my abs working to stabilize my body. As we're doing this, four and five. Aha! All right, guys. You push your dumbbells aside. We're going to take a little bit of rest. And then we're going to go into seven my hips. This is going to be part of our mobility Wednesday today. Let's do it seven my hips. I feel like we should do. Seven my hips at least once a week. Some people love them, some people don't like them, but the more you do them, the more benefit you get out of them, the easier they are, all right? Got my water. Go ahead, grab my mat again. All right, I'm going to lay down on my side. I'm going to support my head with my arm. I'm going to line up my ankles with my knees, with my hips, with my shoulders. So I'm not bringing my legs forward. I want to be in a complete line. Use that front hand to keep you from falling forward. I want you to stay in this nice, front, nice long line. I want you to keep your feet dorsal flexed, all right? So not pointed, one flex. Then I want you to raise and lower this leg. So guys, with this stuff, you're not going high with it, all right? We're staying low. We're keeping about 12 to 18 inches in between our bottom foot and our top foot as we, as we raise and lower 10 times. Just straight up. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, we're going to go center to forward. Again, guys, this is not a big motion. I just want to maintain that foot of distance between my lower foot and my upper foot as I go center to forward 10 times. Now, 
already feeling this. Woo. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we're gonna go center to back. All right, feeling that neck glute. Again, guys, not extreme motion, just a little bit, but I still want you to maintain that distance between those legs. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Now we're going to go fully forward, fully back. Two. Keep in that distance. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, feeling it. Ten. All right, guys. Now we're going to do circles forward. So again, not big circles. Keeping that foot dorsal flex. Ten circles forward. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Ten circles back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, all right. Ten big bicycles for dessert. Really bringing that leg back and forward. Big bicycles. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Woo! Guys, that was hard, which is indicating to me that I need to do these more often during the week. Yeah. All right. We are switching out to the other side. All right. So, again, guys, get in that nice position where you're totally lined up, where your ankles are aligned with your knees, with your hips, with your shoulders, supporting your head with your arm, bringing that hand forward, keeping from falling forward, lifting that leg, dorsal flexing that foot. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, then we're going center to forward. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Center to back. One. Two, maintaining that distance, guys. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! And then we're going to go all the way forward, all the way back. This is two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, yeah, nine, ten. Woo, yeah, circles. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo, circles back. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what for dessert? Big bicycles. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ah, ten. Woo! Oh boy, but guess what? We still have our homework. Haha, I didn't forget today. I did not. All right, guys. Let's do those squats. Let's do our good medicine. We're doing 20 squats. If you want to push it even harder, go ahead and grab those weights again. Four. Five. 
One of you talking about being the buffalo as opposed to the cow running into that storm trying to be fearless you can bring your fear with you just make sure you run into it all right trying to get through those problems as soon as possible as opposed to letting them drag on but anyway you guys we're here to help you bring out the warrior within Guys, it's been a while since I've done those seven-way hips, and I can feel it. Like, usually I don't have an issue with it. And I was dying after, like, the second leg lift. I was like, oh, God, this is not going to end well. 